Hey, welcome back for another very exciting tutorial here at the Photoshop Training Channel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Twitter at JRFromPTC. In this tutorial, we're going to create a poster based on the TV show Game of Thrones. We'll create the logo by using simple techniques with a character panel. Then we'll apply layer styles to give the text a chrome look. We'll then turn the text into vectors and use the pen tool and the direct selection tool to modify the text and distort it to match the text from the show. We'll finish up the text effect by adding a glow and we'll then add clouds to the background. There's also a second part to this tutorial where I show you how to create the sword from scratch. If you're a subscriber to my newsletter, you can go into the subscriber only section and you can watch it there now if you like, or you can also click on the link that you received in my email reminding you about this tutorial. If you're not a newsletter subscriber yet, you can subscribe for free. Simply go to my website, photoshoptrainingchannel.com and enter your email in the box. You'll then receive an email with a link to the subscriber only content section in my website. Another thing that I'll do is that I'll include the PSD for this tutorial in case you want to take a closer look at the settings I use for the layer styles. So you can go there and download that now if you want. Anyway, let's get started with this tutorial. So I've already created a document that is 1400 pixels wide by 740 tall. I have a white background. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn the background black. I can do so by pressing Control I, Command I on the Mac to invert. And then I'm going to click on the Type tool. And for the font family, I'm going to choose Time Roman. Now this is not the font that's used in the Game of Thrones logo, but we're going to make some adjustments so it looks a lot like it. For the font size, I'm just going to choose 72. We're going to make it bigger in a moment. And for the color, I'm going to choose white. And make sure that the align is centered. And I'm going to click in the middle here in the canvas. And I'm going to type Game of Thrones. I'm going to press Control Enter, Command Enter on the Mac. And that accepts the text that I typed. Next, I want the text to be centered in the canvas. So an easy way of centering items in Photoshop is pressing Control A, Command A on the Mac to make a selection around the canvas. I can click on the uh, Move tool and then click on the Align Vertical Center button here. And you saw how it pushed it down to the center of the canvas vertically. And then I can click on the Align Horizontal Center button here to align it horizontally. So now the Game of Thrones text is right in the center. I can press Command D, uh, Control D to deselect. And I can press T on the keyboard to come back into the Type tool. And if I add more characters, the text will be centered. So that's the reason we did that. So we can uh, make changes if we want to and keep our text centered. I'm going to press Control Enter once again. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to select the entire text. And by the way, you can select the entire line of text by double clicking on the icon here of text icon and it selects it. As you can see, we're going to make the text bigger. So I'm going to click on the font size input box here. I'm going to hold shift and press the up arrow key to make this text larger. And I'm going to leave it at 154 points or so. Then I'm going to click on the character panel. And I'm going to click on this button here, the small caps button, which is going to turn all the letters into capital letters. But the letters that were lowercase before are smaller than the capital letters. So we get this look here. Now, if you've seen the Game of Thrones logo, you'll know that these letters here and these are higher up. So let's move the baseline of these letters higher. And what I'll do is I'll click on the baseline input box here. And I can use the arrow keys to move that up. You see how I'm adding points here? And the text rises as I do that. So we're going to move it up to about 18 points. I can also click and drag uh, on this side of the text. And it's going to push up, as you can see. So the baseline for this is also 18 points. Then I'm going to highlight the word of and I'm going to change the font size for this so I'm going to make this smaller so click on the font size and I like using the arrow keys because it just gives me more control I can use shift to make it way smaller faster and I'm going to go down to about 82 or so points and that looks okay now I got to raise this up higher so with that selected I'm going to um, use the baseline uh, input box again and I'm just going to raise that up higher 
So you, you can see how it, it moves up. And for this, we're going to keep it about 36 points, something like that. And actually, uh, I'm going to get this out of the way just so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to press Control Enter just so we can see what we've done so far. So this already looks a lot more like the Game of Thrones logo. And all we've done is just make a few adjustments in the uh, character panel. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the space in between these two characters and in between these two characters. So I'm just going to click uh, before the letter O. And I'm just going to hold Alt Option on the Mac and use the left arrow key to reduce the space, something like that. And I'll do the same thing for the letter T here. Alt, option on the Mac, left arrow key. And you can use the right arrow key to increase the space if you want to. And, and anyway, notice that as I hit those keys, this number here changes. And I'll get that as close as I can without overlapping the text. And we're going to change that T a little later on. But anyway, this Actually, you know what? This might need a little more space, and and this is okay. So I'm going to press Control Enter, and that's what we have so far. I know the T and the F are not looking good right now, but we're going to fix that a little later on. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to add some styles to this, but before I do, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and use the mouse wheel to zoom in just, just so we can see the text closer because we're going to be adding some styles, and I want to see what those styles look like from up close. I'm going to double click on the side here in the empty space to bring up the layer style dialog box and I'm going to click on bevel and emboss. And you can sort of see this gave it a little bevel but we're going to work with it a little bit more. I'm going to give it a lot more depth so maybe maybe about 144 percent. I'll make it 145 and we'll increase the size of this to maybe 8 pixels, 7 pixels, something like that. And we're going to change the contour of this lighting. That way we get more of a chrome effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this down pointing arrow. And you can click on all of these to see which one matches the look that you want to go for. But I think that for us, this one here is going to be the best one, which is the rolling slope contour. And I'm just going to increase the opacity of the highlight mode and the shadow mode all the way up to 100 on both of those. Then we're going to work at the angle and altitude. I'm going to uncheck the use global lighting and uh, we're just going to move these around until we get something that uh, resembles uh, chrome text. So one thing I like to do is just uh, I like to click on the input box and just use the arrows to find the angle that I'm looking for. So maybe something like negative 130 degrees and you can see how this is starting to look more like chrome text. I can click on the altitude now and actually this is looking really good. I don't think I need to make too many changes so maybe I'll just leave it at about 40 degrees or so and we have a nice looking chrome text now. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna press OK on that. Right now it's not necessary but I know we're gonna have clouds uh, a little later on. So I want to add a, a shadow around the text, but we can't see it because this is uh, this is obviously black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the lock here once to get rid of it. If you're using Photoshop CC, that will work. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, you're going to need to hold Alt on the keyboard and click on that lock to make it disappear. And then you can double click on the layer here. And we're just going to click on cover, Color Overlay. And we're just going to ch choose a gray color. It doesn't really matter which color it is. I just want to be able to see the shadow that I'm going to add. So I'm going to double click on the layer uh, again to bring up the layer style and click on outer glow. And I know I said we're going to create a shadow, but we're going to use the outer glow for this. When you look at the layer style panel, don't really look at the name so much because you can use glows as shadows and shadows as glows or anything really. So just keep in mind that you can do whatever you want. You don't have to use them just for the purpose that the title describes. Anyway, so the outer glow, we're going to change to black. But notice that everything disappeared, and that's because the blend mode is set to screen. And if you remember from our blending mode tutorials, any of the blend modes here in between this divider and this divider will make all the dark value pixels disappear. So we gotta change them to any of these blending modes or the normal blending mode. So I'm just gonna go to normal. And now we can see the outer glow. We can increase the size of it if we want to. So I'll increase the size just a little bit, maybe maybe five or so, and maybe give it just a little bit of noise. 
And uh, I'll bump the noise all the way up just so you can see what it does. So the noise adds noise to the shadow and that's good. It gives it a little bit more of a realistic effect, but I don't want it too sharp. So maybe, maybe I'll leave it at three or something like that. And then I'll press okay. So I'm gonna just disable the effects of our background layer just so we can go back to a black background. And obviously you can't see the shadow, but later on when we add clouds, you'll be able to see them and we don't have to worry about that anymore. Anyway, so I'm going to zoom out just so we can see what this is looking like, and it's looking pretty good. As you can see, this is a nice chrome looking effect. Now the only problem is that it's too white in my opinion, too gray. So we need to add just the hint of color here, maybe add a little bit of blue. So I'm going to disable the effects just so you can see that we're working with white text. But I want to add a little color to that. So if I double click on the text thumbnail here, it's going to select the entire text and I can click on the color switch here to bring up the color picker. And we're gonna be working with the hue, saturation, and brightness. So let's work with the brightness first. I'm just gonna click on the brightness input box and I'm going to move that down to maybe 75% or so. By the way, I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard and notice that when I press down, this circle moves down. If I press the up arrow key, the little circle moves up. So it's an easy way of having complete control of the color that you're picking. So for the brightness, we're going to be at 75%, which is going to give us this great color here. So it's no longer 100% white. Then we're going to add uh, hue and saturation. So for hue, I'm just going to move that up. And by the way, when I move the hue, you'll notice that the hue slider here is moving up. So I need a blue. And by the way, you can hold shift to move a little bit faster, increments of 10 uh, degrees. And I'm gonna go all the way up to about 210 or so. Uh, make it to 11. Then we're gonna change the saturation. So we're, so this circle's moved to the right. So we just wanna give it just a little hint of blue. So we're not gonna go too much here, just a little bit. Maybe, maybe six or seven percent, something like that. We'll leave it at seven. And we'll press okay. If I press control enter, and I can go to edit and step backwards, you'll see the difference. So this is before, step forward, this is after. So it gives it a little bit of color and it makes it a little more realistic in my opinion. So we can zoom out and the text is looking pretty good. Okay, now at this point, we need to make some changes to the actual shape of the text. So after this step, the text will no longer be editable. At this point, we can add characters if we want to. And each character that we add has the same layer style but we're gonna make a duplicate copy of this. You can click and drag it and drag it over into the new layer icon to make a duplicate or you can just press Control J, Command J on the Mac. And I'm just gonna shut off the visibility by clicking on the little eye here just to make it invisible. So now we're only gonna be working with the copy because we're gonna make some changes that are gonna make this non-editable. So I wanna have a copy to go back to in case I need to make changes. So in this copy layer here, I'm going to right click on it and select convert to shape. And this is going to create a shape out of the text. What that means is that it's now uh, vectors, which is why you see these lines with these dots here. You can click on the direct selection tool and you can click on these dots and you can move them to create new shapes and the layer style is still there. So it's still applying that same layer style to the text layer. So I'm just going to press Control alt z Command Option Z on the Mac to undo those changes. And we're going to make some adjustments to the text here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and make a selection to select all the points on the top of the T. And you can see how they're now filled in. If I zoom in, you can actually see it better. So now they're uh, solid white as opposed to just an outline of white like you see down here. That's how you can tell which are selected and which are not. So I'm going to zoom out now and I'm just going to use the arrow key and you can use the arrow keys. You can click and, and drag the entire selection if you want to, but I'm just going to use the arrow keys. So I'm just going to go up and I'm going to zoom out just to see how it looks. So it's looking pretty good. I'm going to make another selection here, just this side of the T and I'm just going to hold shift and the right arrow key to move it all the way to the right. So something like that. And this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to select the entire uh, word thrones. And actually I just missed one there. You see that how I missed that one here in the corner. I'm just going to hold shift and 
selected. Oops, it looks like I deselected the uh, the word thrown, so I'll try again. And yeah, I got them all this time. So now I'm going to use the arrow key to move. I want the top of the T to be right here, right in, right in the middle of the F here. So something like that. Now I'm going to select the word of as well, and I'm just going to move it to the left a little bit so it's closer to the E. And I'm going to zoom out. And this is looking much better now. Now one of the things I want to change is the letter M and the letter N because I don't want the side here coming out like so. So I just want a sharp uh, point here on the top. So to do that I'm going to use the delete anchor point tool and I'm just going to start deleting anchor points. Like so I'm clicking on those squares little dots there and when I click on them they disappear they go away. So we're actually uh, making big dramatic changes to the shape and that's okay that's what I want to do. So now that I've deleted all the ones that I don't want, I have this anchor point here that's got this handle sticking up here. And I want to bring that handle down. To do that, I'm going to click on the direct selection tool again. I'm going to click on that handle. And notice what happens when I move that uh, handle. It just adjusts the shape of the curve. But I want it way down here. I, I want it to snap to the actual uh, point. And actually, a better way of snapping the handle to the point is to use the convert point tool and I can just click on it once and it snaps it gets rid of that handle so now I can click on the direct selection tool and make sure that that point is selected and I can just move it up like so and actually I'm gonna click on the ruler here and drag a guide down if you don't see your ruler you can press control R or command R on the Mac to hide it or show it and just click and drag the guide down so I'm going to use that as a, a visual aid to see where the uh, point is going to go. And actually, you know what? It, it needs to go a little bit higher. So maybe something like that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of the M there. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to show you a trick. Um, you don't need to use the delete anchor point tool. You can just click on the pen tool and make sure that auto add and delete is checked. That means that if I hover over a curve, the plus sign appears on the pen tool meaning that it's going to add a point. See I clicked under and added a point and if I hover over a point it automatically switches to the delete point tool so I can click on it and it will delete a point. So you don't have to keep switching in between all these tools you can just use the pen tool. So I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to just start deleting these points here. Like so and I'm going to go back into the convert point tool click on it once and switch back to the pen tool oops sorry about that switch back to the direct selection tool click on the uh, point and move it up now we have a problem uh, this point here needs to move over to the right so I'm gonna select this point and select all the points on the left side of the bottom part of the M here and then move those to the right like so and this point here it's not centered so I'm gonna click on it and then move it to the left a little bit to center it more so that's what the M looks like now. I'm going to press Control H, Command H on the Mac to hide the guide. Let's zoom out by holding Alt, Option on the Mac, and scrolling back on the mouse wheel. So this is what our text is looking like, like now. And actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, there's, this is still not looking uh, very good. i got to move uh, some points here. I'm going to uh, select these and move them to the right to center them a little bit better. So maybe somewhere around there and that looks a bit more centered maybe I brought these in a little too much so I'll, I'll move them out and maybe these need to move over to the left a little bit so yeah you might have to play around with it a little bit just to get the right the right look and actually maybe I have to move these in something like that and that's that's good enough um, you can play around with it more if you want to. You can do the same thing to the end if you want on, on this point and I'm going to quickly take care of that. I'm just going to zoom in and this time I'm going to go faster since you already know what we're doing. Click on the pen tool. I don't see the points so make sure that you click on, on the uh, path here so you can see the points. Then click on the pen tool, hover over the points and delete the ones that you don't need. So I don't need, and I do need that one click on it once and go back into the move tool and I'm gonna press control H to bring the guide just so I can uh, put that point right on top of that guide like the other ones control H to hide and I can zoom out and that looks pretty good 
one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these points here. Now, if you ever have trouble selecting the paths, um, you can just click on paths here and then click on Game of Thrones shape and then go back into the layers panel and you can see the outline and you can just click on it and see the, the dots there. So that's just in case that sometimes it deselects it and you, and you have trouble selecting it. But anyway, so I'm going to select uh, the word Thrones or everything but the T and then this top part of the T here as well. And I'm just going to move everything to the left to get it closer to that T. So something like that. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing we got to do is add the, lo the vertical lines that are in the O's in that logo. So I'm going to zoom in. We'll do the little one first. Click on the shape uh, tool here. And I'm just going to create a nice thin rectangle here. And I'm using the uh, space bar, by the way. When you're creating a, a shape, you can use the space bar and move it around to a different location while you're creating it. Don't let go of the mouse button. So just going to create something that's sort of thin, not too thick, maybe something like that. And I'll just place it here and scale it in. So something like that. And maybe and then after you create this rectangle, you can use the move arrow tool to move it if you want to and I think something like that will work. I'm going to press control J to duplicate it, command J on the Mac and then move it to the right. And this one will be actually this one will be in the center. Control J, Command J again to duplicate, and I'm going to move it. And you know what? The first one that I created is too far off to the left, so I'm going to just move it one pixel to the right, and that looks pretty good. So now that I've created these three shapes, I want to apply the same effect. But if I apply it individually, it's going to look like four different shapes as opposed to one solid object. So what I need to do is click on the Game of Thrones copy and drag that up to the top, click on it, click on the bottom shape here at the bottom uh, on the bottom rectangle and then press control E command E on the Mac to merge them and now they will all be one shape with the same effect remember to move the Game of Thrones layer to the top otherwise it won't work so let's do that one more time now we're gonna do it with the uh, big O here so I'm gonna create a shape and I don't need this one panel so I'll move it away click on the move tool uh, this time I'm gonna hold alt click and drag and it makes a duplicate copy so that's another way of duplicating uh, layers in Photoshop so hold alt click and drag and this middle one here I'm gonna move over to the left one pixel press control T drag it up a little bit drag it down okay I just wanna make sure that the shapes are overlapping that there's no gaps and once again click in the Game of Thrones copy move it all the way to the top hold shift click on the bottom one Control E, Command E on the Mac, and it merges it into one shape. Okay, so everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom out. And you know what? It, it, things are looking good, but there might be too much space in between these lines. So I'm just going to um, press Control Alt Z to undo. And I'm just going to bring that one in more. Bring this one in more. That's a little too much. And make sure that they're centered to the O there so maybe move it to the right a little bit and I'll select them all again control E command E on the Mac and I think this will be better Let, let's see how that looks I'll zoom out and it looks like I have a space here now so I gotta make this one taller so I'll press control alt Z again find that shape press control T and then just drag it down and then maybe drag it up a little bit just to be safe and I'll select all of them again control E command E and yep now they're one shape and it looks much better so I'll zoom out and yeah things are looking pretty good okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create the clouds that are behind the text so I'm just gonna click on this arrow here just so we can have a little more space I'm gonna click on this layer here and I'm gonna add a new layer above that then I'm gonna click on this icon here to have black as my foreground color and white as my background color I'm gonna go into filter render clouds just to create some clouds I'm gonna add a layer mask by clicking on this button here and I'm gonna add clouds on the layer mask as well so that way we create a more translucent effect on the clouds then I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer and I'm just gonna make them a little brighter not too much I don't want to blow them out but you don't want them as dark so maybe something like that and we we can come back and change this if we want to 
then we're gonna add a color balance layer and this is a great way of adding color to black and white layers especially because you can target the tones so I'm gonna target the highlights so we can add some blue to the highlights and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of cyan so maybe 25 we don't need any green or magenta but we do want to add a little bit of blue so maybe we add you know something something like that now this is getting to be a little too saturated but that's okay I'm just gonna double click on the layer here to bring up the layer style panel and you might have seen me use the blend if option before uh, this essentially hides pixels depending on the tonality of the image so for example if we click and drag to the left here the light pixels from the bottom layer hide the pixels on the layer above or we can do the same thing with the dark pixels. The dark pixels of the layer before will hide the pixels above it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide some of the pixels in the light areas here, but I don't want any sharp transitions like that. So to avoid that, you can hold the Alt key on the keyboard and click on it, Option on the Mac, and then you separate that little triangle and then you can get a much nicer transition so you see how we're losing a lot of the blue and only ke keeping a hint of blue and that's what we want to do so something like this it's gonna work great for us I'm just gonna press OK this is actually still a little too bright so I'm gonna click on the clouds layer mask I'm gonna go into image adjustment levels and maybe I'll darken it up a little bit and maybe move this over to the left so it's not too bright just a little bright maybe something like that so that's the before and after we're darkening it up just a little bit and I'm gonna press OK so now I'm gonna select the clouds layer and the two adjustment layers by holding shift and clicking on the top one to select all three then I'm gonna press control G command G on the Mac to turn that into a group I'm gonna add a layer mask but I'm gonna hold alt on the keyboard to add a layer mask that is black which hides everything in that group then I'm gonna click on the brush tool make sure that I have a large brush that is soft so this won't work fine mine is set at 454 pixels then I'm gonna set my foreground color to white and I can paint in some of those clouds and I'm just clicking I'm not really painting I'm just doing one click at a time that way I have more control of where my clouds go so something like that like here on this part that I added too much I can switch over to black you can click on this icon here the double arrow or you can press X on the keyboard or go between one and the other and you can hide some of those clouds so that's the way we're gonna create our clouds alright the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the Game of Thrones shape layer there and we're gonna add another layer with the uh, same brush selected I'm gonna switch my foreground color to white and I'm just gonna click in the center like so then I'm gonna press V on the keyboard to go into the move tool I'm gonna press Control T command T on the Mac to transform I'm gonna click on the handle here in the middle hold alt option on the Mac and drag down to the center so we can have one long line like so and this is gonna be the highlight of our text then I'm gonna hold alt again but this time on the right side handle here and then bring that in right about there and I'm gonna press enter and I'm actually gonna zoom in just so I could see that better and it's still a little too thick so I'm gonna press control T again hold alt and I'm gonna come down and you know what sometimes when you come down you might see it snap and you can't really get it to where you want it to go so while you're holding alt or option you can also throw in the control key or command key in the Mac and it turns off snapping so you can actually get in there really really close like so then I'm gonna press enter maybe move it down a little bit that's a nice highlight there but I want to add some color to it so I'm just gonna double click on it and this time I'm gonna add an inner glow and I'm gonna set the blending mode to normal I mean let me move this here so you can see it well, actually you don't need to see the bottom of the window even though it's getting cut off by the video but that's okay you don't need to see the bottom part then we can click on and the inner glow color picker here and that we're gonna we need a blue color just sort of to match the background so I'm just gonna push up here maybe somewhere around here and we need it to be more blue than that so maybe right about there should work and something like that so you can see the the highlight there press OK 
And you know what, the opacity is way too strong, so let's bring that down to maybe about 50. That looks pretty good, press OK. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Control J, and then press Control T, and I'm going to bring this second one way in, like right about there. Maybe, you know what, maybe even make it a little bit taller, holding Alt and Control, that way it doesn't snap. So now I have a bigger highlight there, but for this one, I'm going to bring the inner glow opacity down even more. So maybe 25 or 26%. Press OK, and then I'm going to zoom in. And now you can see my highlight. So now it's got this beautiful looking highlight there. OK, so that's looking pretty good. Now, you can create some highlights on the background here if you want to. All you need to do is just add another curves adjustment layer and sort of blow out some areas and press Control i Command i on the Mac to hide the effects by the curves layer and just paint with white like we did earlier and just add some some highlights in certain areas if you want to. Um, that's totally up to you. I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted to show you that in case you thought it was too dark. And that's it for this tutorial. As I mentioned earlier, you can head over to the subscriber only section of my website to watch the second part of this tutorial where I'll show you how to create a sword from scratch and add it into the poster. If you're not a newsletter subscriber yet, you can subscribe for free. Simply go to my website, photoshoptrainingchannel.com and enter your email in the box. You'll then receive an email with a link to the subscriber only content where you will find the second part to this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to click the like button and share it with a friend. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or send me an email. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys again very soon.